Hi, and welcome to this episode of Extension Ed Talks on Next Tech Local One. My name is London Wadi Kay, and I'm the Extension Consumer Food Safety Specialist for Kansas State University, as well as the University of Missouri. Today I'm going to talk about the topic of genetically modified organisms and their food safety. So this is obviously a very controversial topic and kind of a hot topic uh, in the media. And so I'm gonna to try to provide some research-based information, some science-based information on exactly if genetically modified organisms, um, on the safety of genetically modified organisms for consumers. So we know that consumers are increasingly interested in how foods are produced and how that might affect their health. We also know that, um, again, as I said, that this is kind of a controversial topic. A study was done back in 2015, and they asked just the general public, do you think genetically modified organisms are safe? And actually, only 37% of US adults said that they felt like genetically modified organisms were safe. However, when they asked the same question to scientists, to the American Association for the Advancement of Science, 87, or sorry, 88% of those scientists said that they felt like genetically modified organisms were safe. So it's something that we want to make sure we provide accurate information to consumers about, about the safety of these, what we normally refer to as genetically modified organisms. Actually, the more proper term for what we're generally talking about is genetic engineering. So also another um, synonym for that might be transgenic crops or transgenic animals. Um, but the commonly used term in the media is genetically modified organisms. So I'll be mostly using that term um, today as I'm talking. But the really um, scientifically accurate term that's used by FDA and regulators is actually genetic engineering. So K-State Research and Extension does have a fact sheet as well as a leader's guide that provides more information on this topic and that's available on our K-State Extension website. Uh, you, again, you could go to the K-State website and just type in the search box, genetically modified organisms, and you would probably find those resources. So when we think about genetic modification of, of crops, actually food crops have been modified for centuries um, to be more, um, more vigorous or to be, you know, to have the traits that people are looking for. Um, Crossbreeding is a way that people have been genetically modifying organisms for a long time. Actually, also selective breeding is another way that, that plants are bred. So they might take a kind of a, a carrot that looks like a lot of roots and then just through selective breeding and maybe through some crossbreeding, they're able to get that carrot to be the carrot that we know today. So it makes it into a, a different organism. And that actually is, is just, just classic done through classic breeding. So when we think about genetically engineered foods, or again, what most people commonly think of as GMOs, um, it's actually just that the plants or the animals have had their DNA altered in a lab to enhance um, the desirable traits. So when we think about DNA, it's like a, it's like a strand of pearls. So the DNA will have um, different genes that have different will express different traits um, in that plant or in that animal. And so when there's crossbreeding is done, when um, you're looking for one specific gene that you're interested in, when you're crossing that traditional uh, donor with the commercial variety, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different genes coming along, not just the gene that you're interested in, but you'll also be getting some other genes as well. When you're doing genetic engineering, then you can take just that one gene that you're interested in and make sure that that one gene is going to be inserted into um, the commercial variety that you're interested in. So genetic engineering is much more precise because you're getting just that particular gene that you're interested in. So what are some of the benefits of genetically engineered foods? Why are we doing it in the first place? Um, because genetic engineering can help to produce more food and enhance the quality of the food that is, um, that is being grown. Um, there's different genetic engineered varieties out there, but they can help to reduce yield loss, um, help to reduce crop damage from weed, help to reduce insect damage or drought damage. So um, there's a number of different things that might be beneficial through genetic engineering. 
Uh, more recently, there's been more crops that are being developed and have been approved recently um, that help improve nutrition and can help improve um, the shelf life of products as well. So what products are currently in our U.S. food supply that are um, potentially genetically engineered? And this would not be all the foods um, from these different crops, but, but, um, but some of them might be. So corn is um, one that's a, a high percentage of the corn that's raised in the U.S. is done through genetic engineering. And that um, can be both in field corn as well as um, some sweet corn. Um, that's done for insect resistance and herbicide um, resistance as well. Soybeans is another crop where a lot of the soybeans grown in the U.S. are the seeds are developed through genetic engineering. Um, also cotton um, is something that is used in animal feed so that eventually gets into the food supply. Canola, some of the canola um, raised in the U.S. might be done through genetic engineering. Um, alfalfa, and again alfalfa um, can be used as an animal feed so that's like a precursor to our human food supply. Sugar beets also um, are, can be raised to, through genetic engineering um, to have herbicide tolerance. Also some new varieties of potatoes, so not, um, not commonly found in grocery stores, but some potato varieties um, are genetically engineered to reduce bruising and to reduce the levels of acrylamide. And acrylamide is a potential cancer-causing agent. So um, these potatoes that are developed through genetic engineering are actually, um, can help to reduce the bruising spots and, and reduce cancer-causing um, agents. Also papaya. Um, so some of, the, some of the papaya in the US um, has been bred through genetic engineering to be resistant to disease. Also some, some of the squash, some of the summer squashes, so um, have also been bred to be resistant to disease. So again, this would just be some of the, um, some of the zucchini that you might find might be through genetic engineering. So uh, in the past, things like tomatoes, there, there was one variety of tomatoes that was approved for use in the U.S. that was um, developed through gen genetic engineering. It's not currently on in the U.S. food supply anymore. Um, so tomatoes are not currently um, genetically engineered in the U.S. that you would buy in a store. Also wheat and sorghum, you know, any other food crop that I did not previously mention, those are not um, genetically engineered. The, the crops that we're, or sorry, the foods that we're eating in the stores that contain wheat or sorghum, um, that wheat or sorghum is not currently genetically engineered um, in the U.S. food supply at this time. And with that, I'll, I'll wrap it up for this segment and uh, we'll go ahead and go um, on a break. And when we come back, we're gonna talk more about the regulation of genetically engineered organisms. $10,000 With seven agents in three locations, Hammett Land and Auction Incorporated can meet your every need when it comes to your next sale. Visit them at hammettauction.com and you'll find all their upcoming sales including farms, ranches, as well as farm equipment and even real estate listings, both residential and commercial. They've been serving western Kansas since 1983 and with offices in Stockton, Russell and Hayes, they're always nearby to assist you. Hammett Land and Auction Incorporated, contact them today. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Todd Pankratz, an OBGYN who is now accepting patients. This means women can receive local specialized care for high-risk pregnancies, infertility, medical weight loss, and various surgeries. With Dr. Pankratz and on-staff physicians, the hospital hopes to serve as a premier facility for women's health care, and this care extends to the entire family as more than 60 babies are welcomed here each year. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. 
With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. Make moving and storing your home or business easy with storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. With two facilities, they can store anything from antiques to automobiles and everything in between. Interior units for items needing special care. Drive-up units of all sizes, perfect for home or business. And outside storage for trucks, boats, and RVs. As an authorized U-Haul dealer, they have everything for your next move across town or across the country. Storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. Making moving and storing easy. Western Auction and Real Estate LLC is ready to travel to you. Their team includes auctioneers and real estate specialists that will exceed your expectations. They offer experience in agriculture real estate, commercial and residential sales, and farm equipment auctions. Plus, they conveniently travel to your location. And it doesn't stop there. Visit westernauctionandrealestate.com today to shop their online equipment auctions too. For professionalism from concept to completion, it's Western Auction and Real Estate. Hi, and welcome back to our Extension Ed Talks. And uh, my name is Londa Nwadike. I'm the Extension Consumer Food Safety Specialist for Kansas State University, as well as the University of Missouri. And today I'm talking about genetic engineering and the safety of foods that are commonly known in the marketplace as genetically modified organisms. So um, in this section, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the regulation of genetically engineered products or, genetic, or genetically modified organisms. So, the FDA does very rigorously review these products to make sure that they're safe. And they want to make sure that they're safe from any sort of unintended effects or any sort of toxicity. And they also make sure that there's no sort of allergenicity that might be caused by, by these sort of products. For example, if they ever were um, breeding some sort of a, let's say, wheat or some sort of a, a food and they use like genes from peanuts which a lot of people are allergic to peanuts they would want to make sure that that they're making sure that those products wouldn't um, make anybody allergic to to that new crop um, they also want to make sure that the nutritional composition of the food is um, not significantly different from the pre from the original version of the product so the FDA is really closely checking to make sure that the food products are um, are the same and are going to be safe um, and make sure that there's not going to be on any unintended effects of those um, genetically engineered products the USDA and the EPA also regulate these products to make sure that they're going to be safe for the rest of agriculture and to make sure that they're safe for the environment as well. So when a company um, is developing these genetically engineered um, seeds or, or animals, um, the development and approval process sorry, is very rigorous. So they really go through a lot of approvals and a lot of testing to make sure that they are going to be safe and that they aren't going to cause any of these unintended effects. So that means it takes about 13 years from development to market. So it's a long time period that they are, um, from the time that they're actually developing the product until it's actually available for, for people to buy, um, because they're really trying to make sure that it's safe and that it's not gonna cause um, pro any problems. So these genetically engineered, again, seeds for, for plants or also animals, are the most researched and tested products that are out there because they are so rigorously reviewed. Um, if there are other breeding techniques that might be used, actually there isn't the same regulatory oversight for. So, so genetically engineered crops are very um, carefully tested. It is really important that we maintain this regulatory oversight. So um, it's very important that, that these agencies do regulate the crops as closely as they do. So now moving on to thinking about just the safety of genetically engineered organisms. So are they safe to consume or not? That's a, a big question that people have. There's been hundreds of studies that have been done since um, genetically engineered crops have come on to um, have, have been able to be produced and, and consumed by people. And these hundreds of studies that have been done have not shown any risk to human health. Um, there's been no documented instances of harm um, to human health from genetically engineered organisms since they were first released in um, 1994. So we have over 20 years of data showing that there just hasn't been any documented risks to human health. Um, 
you may hear of some uh, instances here or there, but, but there just hasn't been any substantiated um, documented cases of, of, of harm to human health from these products. There was a study done um, by um, some researchers in Italy, and they um, published this research in Critical Reviews in Biotechnology, which is a peer-reviewed um, journal that's really, you know, they're going to make sure that, that this is going to be accurate. So they looked at um, the scientific literature on genetically engineered crop safety for the last 10 years, um, and so that would have been from um, 2003 to 2013 that they looked at in that time period. And they've come to the consensus that um, the scientific research conducted so far has not detected any significant hazard directly connected with the use of genetically modified crops. So this was, again, a study that was in, done in Italy. It was in a peer-reviewed article showing that there just hasn't been any um, significant um, harm or any significant hazard that's been connected with the use of genetically modified crops. So, so we just don't have any evidence showing that there is any harm to human health from these, from these crops. But we recognize that there are a lot of concerns that people have about genetic engineering. Um, there's concerns that people have about environmental effects. And um, you know, those are something separate from, from the human health concerns. Um, of course, people also have concerns about corporate control. You know, so we recognize that people have concerns about those issues as well. And of course, um, you know, there is some uncertainty about the long-term effects. You know, we know what can happen to people after 20 years of consuming genetically engineered crops because we've had them on the market for more than 20 years, but we don't know what would happen if somebody consumes these organisms, or these um, crops derived from those organisms for 40 years because we just don't have that data. But um, based on the information that we've seen so far, there's no reason to believe that there will be any um, long-term effects um, after a longer period of time. Um, and, you know, we don't know if there will be any uh, other studies coming up in the future. We, you know, of course, just don't, don't have that information. Um, and as I mentioned, there, of course, there is a small number of studies that might show that genetic engineering um, can cause harm to human health, but, um, but the majority of the studies that ha are out there show that there hasn't been any harm. And then, of course, labeling is another um, important topic. And um, because companies often, um, in the past in particular, they've been resistant to wanting to label their products um, as being genetically engineered or not, then people feel like maybe companies have something to hide. And so um, in the next segment of this talk, we're going to talk about labeling of genetically engineered crops and genetically engineered food products. And so um, stay tuned and come back and we'll talk more about labeling of genetically engineered products. $10,000 With seven agents in three locations, Hammond Land and Auction Incorporated can meet your every need when it comes to your next sale. Visit them at HammondAuction.com and you'll find all their upcoming sales including farms, ranches, as well as farm equipment and even real estate listings, both residential and commercial. They've been serving western Kansas since 1983 and with offices in Stockton, Russell and Hayes, they're always nearby to assist you. Hammett Land and Auction Incorporated. Contact them today. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Todd Pankratz, an OBGYN who is now accepting patients. This means women can receive local specialized care for high-risk pregnancies, infertility, medical weight loss, and various surgeries. With Dr. Pankratz and on-staff physicians, the hospital hopes to serve as a premier facility for women's health care, and this care extends to the entire family as more than 60 babies are welcomed here each year. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, 
farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. Make moving and storing your home or business easy with storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. With two facilities, they can store anything from antiques to automobiles and everything in between. Interior units for items needing special care. Drive-up units of all sizes, perfect for home or business. And outside storage for trucks, boats, and RVs. As an authorized U-Haul dealer, they have everything for your next move across town or across the country. Storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. Making moving and storing easy. Western Auction and Real Estate LLC is ready to travel to you. Their team includes auctioneers and real estate specialists that will exceed your expectations. They offer experience in agriculture real estate, commercial and residential sales, and farm equipment auctions. Plus, they conveniently travel to your location. And it doesn't stop there. Visit westernauctionandrealestate.com today to shop their online equipment auctions too. For professionalism from concept to completion, it's Western Auction and Real Estate. Hi, and welcome back to our Extension Ed Talks. My name is Londa Nwadike, and I am the State uh, Consumer Food Safety Specialist. I work for both Kansas State University and the University of Missouri. And today we're talking about genetically engineered um, products. And so earlier we talked about some of the products that you might find on the market that are um, genetic, possibly genetically engineered. And today we're gonna talk about, now we're gonna talk about genetically engineered labeling. So, um, there was a recent law that was signed um, back last summer, July 29 of 2016. And that law required that most packaged food products um, have a label with either a website or phone number or a smartphone code to have the genetically engineered status on it. Um, so there was a law that was signed that, that said that we need to have some sort of labeling that should be uniform across the entire United States. Um, the details of that law haven't been fleshed out yet. Uh, the USDA is responsible for providing more details of the law and how exactly um, that should be done. Um, and that is to be in place by, or those laws will be released by July of 2018. So there was some state laws that were um, going into place uh, in the past, past few years. Um, but the state laws might all have been different from each other. So now the federal law will override um, the state laws so that there will be one uniform system um, throughout the U.S. So that if producers are selling, um, food producers are selling products in different states, then they don't have to have different labels for different states, but they can have the same label wherever they're selling in the U.S. So I did mention this briefly in the second, in the second se session as well. And um, there is really diverse perspectives on genetically engineered product labeling. Uh, for many consumers, they feel like they wanna know. They have the right to know if the product has been made um, with genetic engineering or not. Um, the FDA in the past always said, you know, there's no harm from genetically engineered foods, as we talked about. Foods are not made any different um, by genetic engineering. Uh, there's you know, no allergies or specific health risks to people from consuming genetically engineered foods. And a big thing, it's, it's really difficult to do it accurately, to say, yes, this does contain genetic engineering, or no, it definitely does not. It's, it's difficult to, to label that accurately. And, and a lot of food companies also had the same perspective as the FDA, that, that it's just hard to do it accurately. Um, and you know that there's no harm from a genetically engineered food, so we don't need to label it necessarily. Um, some companies are already labeling um, their food products voluntarily. Um, so you might find on some, some food packages, uh, like this particular one does say produced with genetic engineering um, on the bottom there. So, so some companies you might find that they already have um, its genetic engineering status. So like this one does contain um, genetic engineering. Um, if you are interested in buying products that do not, are not derived from genetic engineering, um, you can look for the USDA organic label on your products. So any product that has this, um, this seal as being USDA organic, um, that's, those products are not allowed to be made through genetic engineering. So um, there would not be any 
foods or any products derived from genetic engineering in a product such as this with that label on it. Um, also, products that are labeled as GMO free, this product happens to have both, but other products might have um, a label um, from a third party auditor saying that it um, has GMO free. So this one is non-GMO project verified. So um, if you are interested in making sure that you're not consuming these um, products derived through genetic engineering, you can look for those labels. Some of the challenges with, with labeling products with genetic engineering is, um, as with any other regulation, there's a lot of definitions that need to go into place first. So um, first, they'll have to really define uh, what does what does genetic engineering free mean or GMO free mean? Um, like for example, with skim milk, they're still allowed to have a little bit of fat in the milk. It doesn't have to be completely devoid of fat. I believe it's less than 0.5% fat can still be in skim milk. So what's the, what level will we say is completely genetic, G, genetically engineered free? Um, a big thing is that the industry, the food processing industry will have to track all their ingredients and then the production methods that are used for those ingredients um, throughout the process to say if this is um, contains genetic engineering, genetically engineered products or not. Um, more sensitive detection methods will need to be um, developed and then implemented by um, the inspectors, the governmental inspectors, as well as by industry. Um, and so that will increase costs to inspectors as well as to industry. And then just more inspectors will be needed to educate and monitor the industry as well um, to, to regulate to be sure if you know, this product is labeled accurately or not. So we recognize that different people have different philosophies about where they're buying their food, about where their food comes from. You know, we recognize that there are some uncertainties, um, but within um, K-State Research and Extension, we just want to make sure that we're providing accurate scientific-based information. Um, you know, looking at, again, on the food safety side, we just don't have any evidence showing that there's any harm from genetically engineered products. Um, but we also recognize that people have different um, food sourcing philosophies and different, um, different interests in that regard. So there are some helpful websites that are available that you can find more information. Um, some of those will be listed where you can find information. And um, you can also always contact your local extension office. So your local extension office, um, you can find that in, in uh, every county in the state and make sure that you contact them and ask them you can ask them for the fact sheets or just ask them for more information um, about, about this topic. So um, we really uh, thank you for your time today and then we do encourage you to go to your local extension office to ask for more information about this topic or any other topic to get um, unbiased scientific information on that topic. So thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Extension Ed Talks on Next Tech Local One. Thank you.